Testing voice. Oh, I'm not broken. April Fools. Nice try, though. <laughs> but I still love you, Niran. Okay, looks like we've got a quorum. Um, You're so, loud. am I? Yeah. Uh, let me check my mic. Is that any better? Uh, a little bit. Okay. Well, uh, I don't want to lower it too much because then I'll, my voice will break up. Am I too bad too? No. I'll, I'll just move my microphone. Okay, so um, usual rundown. Um, we have lots of viewers in flight. Uh, we have the Love Me, Love Me Render viewer, Bakes on Mesh, Estate, Estate Access Management, EAP, and a uh, maintenance viewer. Um, there's still a Project 360 viewer out there, but we haven't done much of that lately. So um, all of those are going pretty well. Uh, a couple of them are just newly updated. And um, we are hoping that we can get the EAP viewer to be the default pretty soon. Uh, we still have a few issues to go on that. Vera, you want to chime in on where we are there? Uh, yeah, I mean, I can I can apply a little bit on these guys. Uh, Bix on Mesh just went to RC. Um, still waiting for the cohort to fill up there. I think a lot of other people are uh, are kind of fighting over the same users, so we don't have a ton of hours against it yet. Um, let me render um, maybe the next thing that actually goes out to release. We, um, we're, we're splitting off uh, some kind of ongoing work into its own uh, new project. So the, um, basically all of the remaining stuff is, is done. <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, let's see. And then for EAP, we've got... Um, uh, yeah, there's there's basically some graphics issues uh, still being looked at. Uh, Graham's Graham's typing away. Um, I don't know, Ryder. Do you want to say anything more about you specifically? No, that's uh, that's the big thing. Uh, Graham's typing away. Uh, I was just reviewing a uh, pull a uh, pull request from one of the open source contributors. Um, which is yay. I, I, I like pull requests. Um, and uh, we're moving forward. Oh, there's also a state access management that is um, that's in good shape on the viewer side, but it's dependent on a simulator uh, change for a, for a new capability. So that uh, is is going to be. Uh, you know, at least a couple of weeks before that change gets out to Second Life server. When you guys push out EAP, are you going to do an RC, or will it just be full release? Uh, I think EAP is uh, an RC now. It is um, RC now. It'll be full yeah. release. Yeah, but that's what I mean. If you'll do another RC, or just go out with 
Oh, everything all, everything always has to be in RC for a little while before it becomes a default. So, given that we are not ready to promote the current build, there will certainly be another RC build. Okay. Yeah, we have a whole ton of RCs going right now, but you know, eventually, hopefully soon, one of them will become the you know new default viewer, and the circle of life will continue. Somehow we've had a we've had a, a bunch of things that have all not quite gotten out the door for a variety of reasons, and the result is that we're getting a whole bunch of things piled up. So we've got releases queued up that'll last us till the summer. Yeah, that's uh, just great for us <laughs> because <laughs> you know <laughs> trying to keep up with that. Uh, yeah, so, um, that's all going, uh, and, um, on the, on the simulator side, we have a, a bunch of things happening in parallel as well. The RCs are going to be quite busy for the next few weeks with things advancing through them, hopefully. Um, so, um. The team is cranking away. So the floor is open. All right. Well, uh, so I guess still on topic with EEP then. Um, we've had some discussions internally. We're going to try to release EEP as quickly as we can, but there are some RLV issues. Um, Kitty, I asked Kitty if she could be here. I don't know if Kitty is even aware of all of those issues. Kitty? Can somebody sprinkle some catnip? Kitty, <laughs> kitty. Kitty, kitty. There she is. Yeah. Um, if you need help with the RLV stuff, um, obviously we're not familiar with the RLV code very much, but uh, in the course of doing this, Ryder did a bunch of work to support uh, experiences doing things in the viewer um, with EEP attributes. Uh, and it may be that some of that new internal code can be leveraged to, to accomplish some of the same things that, um, that RLV did. So feel free to ping Ryder and, and ask for clarification or help on how to use any of that new stuff. Uh, that's, we're happy to, we're help, I mean, obviously we can't help with the ROV code itself, but uh, we can make sure that you're not duplicating. We can help try to make sure that you're not duplicating effort. Yes, um, because absolutely, there's absolutely. lots of new capability in, in um, the new set environment LSL calls that as viewer support. Uh, so I'm aware, obviously, you guys kind of want us to get EEP, EEP, EEP out as quickly as possible. Uh, Willow, who is our QA manager, is going to try to start a rapid QA process, um, but will still probably be uh, at least a couple weeks after you guys release it, before we can release it. Maybe two, three weeks, Willow? What do you think? Of course, this depends on what we find. Uh, Willow? Um, it may or may not be a public beta. Before April 22nd. Wow. So if I look at a calendar. 
you're at least two weeks for Eep, Oz? Uh, your guess this is probably as good as mine, but yeah, I would say that's probably that's not a terrible estimate. Yeah, because it's yeah, I mean, we like still got renders going to get ahead of it, which always implies a rebuild. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we're at least working hard at that. <laughs> and delay you guys as much as we can. <laughs> um. Anyway, we are going to try to get it as timely as we possibly can. Uh, I will not promise that we're not going to change it up a little bit. After. Well, we, after. We, we wouldn't. We wouldn't want to stifle your creativity too much so don't worry about that um i'm just thinking that you know we we have got a situation where some of some users are disturbed by the backwards compatibility issues and and yeah they did turn out worse than we expected uh, they yeah. would um, but um and that's that's unfortunate and our fault. But well, I, I logged into my Linden home um, today and uh, discovered that the sky is full of black dots. I thought we were being invaded <laughs> by aliens or something. Yeah, we've heard a lot about the black spots. Uh. Oh, uh, really? Uh, there was a question about. Converting. Uh, what channel was it? Really, please tell me you remember. We, we, you asked me to ask Oz about importing or exporting. I don't remember which channel that was. Yeah, of course, most of that ball is going to be aimed at us. I believe you can do this now. You can apply a, a local. I, I think what they want to do is take the environment as it is now. Somebody just say a photographer. To, uh, take the environment as it is now and move the sun to a a more photogenic location. A s sort of sort of effect. Right. Like I, I really let's let's pretend I'm on an eat viewer and I can actually see your wind light. I really like the wind light here, but I I need the shadows to be in a different location, and I need to adjust your wind light locally for me, so that I can take that perfect picture. So yeah, we've actually we've imported that bug. We've attached it to uh, eat two. Which is uh, bunches of things that that we were not able to get into uh, into this cycle. You have to apply an entire environment at the moment, Nero. And you sort of have to start from scratch then to try to make it look like the environment that you're in. But you, but you can't. Can you not copy the current environment to create a new setting, Ryder? If you own that environment. Ah. Yeah. See, that's that's the difference. Is that we try to do what support we could for making these reasonable as tradable objects. This was what I was trying to get across when we were talking the other day, Oz, about um, right. Okay. Our, our photography community. Right. 
I get it. Well, we'll have to we'll have to do some brainstorming about it internally. Figure out what the right thing is. Right. So the next question is what Worley just suggested: is would there be any way to allow users to um, dump that cap to export it and then import it? Right, but how would that be different from just letting you copy the setting as it is? Well, obviously it would be better if they could just copy it, if, the, if well, there was that functionality. I, 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 think there, I, I think there's some, some, there's some middle ground that we can, that we can hit. Um, yeah. And, and let me, let me put some thought, let me put some thought into it. You, you can take any, any environment that you have the rights to and apply it to yourself in any location, any time. Um, what you can't, if I am understanding what Ryder is saying correctly, what you can't do is take someone else's environment and change it, except, right? Right. Okay. We want to be able to change it. We want the user to be able to change it locally, obviously. Um, right. For the, usually, uh, the use case is photography or videography or machinima. And, you know, I'd hate to delay EEP or anything, but take your time if you guys want to work on that. Well, you could, you could do that with a, you could do that with a script, though. You could do that with just changing the environment with a script. Hmm. Well, we'll have to think about it. Uh, take your time. Yeah, a, a script might be a little bit of uh, a, a little bit heavy for the for the application. Yeah, yeah. Well, and a lot of machinima and photographers aren't scripters, so. Right. You can override the environment on your client no matter where you are. But you can't yes. reproduce where you are. So you can't like, copy let's say someone I else's use, environment. Right. Yes. In the same way that we don't let you copy someone else's outfit. That's an exact analogy. Sorry, Nuran. <laughs> Naren um, and Firestorm have a considerable machinima community. Um, right, and, and we love so watching I, the videos, so we yeah. don't want to discourage that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Naren, what are you getting EEP out? Are you going to have it out, like, quickly? Of course you will. <laughs> we'll we'll um I'll be keeping an eye on your support. Oh, right. Uh, Sovereign, that's good news. Yeah. And yeah, lots of shader issues. I'm not, I haven't, I'm guilty of having not tried EEP yet. So uh, I'm going based, I'm, I'm speaking based on what my experts tell me.
Uh, so anyway, that that's where our concern is. That that's where we expect to get the most um, noise from our users is that uh, inability. You know, ba and rage. Yeah, it's it's gonna be fun. Don't get me started on Discord right now. Kind of real quick, just let's say uh, you really like the win or the uh, environment that Oz has set out here, but you need the sun in a different position. You can't easily do that. Well, in this case, you could because I'm using a publicly available one. But right, but right. But in the cases of but that's the different. yeah. Right. If I had created this one from scratch, which I did not. Um, then you would have you would have to work hard to to closely reproduce it before you could modify it. Uh, right. Well, no, it's not entirely right. You can if you cre you can create your own locally, and you can do all the modifications you want to it. But in order to not but change you can't, this environment, what you can't do is start with an environment you don't have rights to. Right. Sovereign has a good question there. Um, that's actually very close to what's running through my head. That that should be should be trivial, maybe. Uh, it's important to note that if we were to allow it won't that be in this iteration. Well, the. Uh, uh, I I decline to predict what writer might or might not sneak into any given release because I, I have a I have a bad track record on. It. We love writer. <laughs> You're the best. <laughs> but uh, what I was about to say was, if we were to introduce such a capability, then adding the ability to save it afterwards would be a violation of the permission system rules in the policy on third party viewers. Yeah, and that's fine. I uh, just, you know, I, a, a, I, a, a yeah. I'm just supposed to put out those caveats, okay? So, yeah, sorry, Nimran. There you go. Bits, bits can who, be who owned. Who wants to predict um, how long it'll take for the first environment copy bot viewer to come out? <laughs> <laughs> no comment. <laughs> I'm not good at predicting, especially the future. Hello, chaps. Can I ask a question about disconnects on teleports, please? Torek, yay. Hey. Yes, you just did. Well, yeah, what's happening about Except that? Except I didn't hear it. What was it? A teleport disconnects. New topic. Ah, yes. Teleport disconnects. Um, we are aware that there appears to be a problem. We can measure some aspects of it. 
Um, unfortunately, one of the reasons that it didn't come to our attention quickly is that whatever it is that's doing it, um, and it, there's obviously something happening, um, is uh, not showing up on our teleport um, success metric graph. One of the things we we monitor very closely is how whether or not teleports are at, at what rate teleports are succeeding and failing. Um, we have a graph for that, and all the Lindens know how to find it. And actually, one of the conversations I've had several times in the last uh, week has been, uh, I'll say something about we're looking into problems with teleports disconnecting people, and some Linden who spends a lot of time in world will say, oh, I thought that was just me. Um, because what Lindens all do when they experience a problem that is in an area where we where we have a, a detailed monitor in place is I'll experience a teleport failure for whatever reason, and I'll open up the teleport failure graph and say, well, is this, is this a symptom of a big problem? And everybody looks at the graph, and it looks perfectly normal, very small variations, um, more or less random. And so we say, oh, well, it must have just been me. So it took us a little while longer because it didn't show on that graph, and I don't know why not yet. Uh, it, um, it it didn't get attention quite as quickly as it should have. So, but we're uh, I have I have my best people on it. Uh, so we're we're digging digging deeply. Um, if if I could predict if if anyone can come up with a solid repro for making this happen or defining the conditions under which it is either more or less likely to happen, please. Tell me about it, um, because is it not just network? Related? We did we did three thousand teleports in a in an automated test last night, and we had one. Try with a VPN. Uh, I mean, I'm mean, just guessing tried, it's got to be networking yeah. in some like. But usually, this I mean, will happen after about the fifth or sixth TP, won't it? it happens to. I'm wondering more. if it's related to activity. The only time I hit this was after I'd been in a busy club area for like half an hour and then like the second teleport after that I crashed out um, so it may be that like you know you have to be in some super busy region accumulating all kinds of you know extra junk and then you know something gets corrupted in memory and next time you try to teleport something gets triggered but that's that's just a guess that's, that's literally the only time I've seen it Um, yeah, well. Have you guys tried reproducing it automated in an automated way through uh, busy regions? Yes. Although we're, we're continuing to try lots of variations. Huh. So um, we do have uh, a couple of theories about what could possibly be responsible for it, but we're still, we haven't yet decided on deploying one of those solutions um, because we're kind of hoping that against hope that we'll find a a metrics difference somewhere that will enable, enable us to tell which which possible code change would would improve the situation so we're just we're wrestling with that so um, Random uh, bugs are fun. Yeah, especially ones that don't show on monitors. My car does oh. this quite frequently. Yeah. It's falling apart we, until I get to the garage, and then it works fine. The way the way it really um, came, you know, jumped up on our radar was that the the median session time went down by a little bit, and that's extremely unusual. Uh, normally. Median session time is is a pretty stable measure. Um, so, um, you s the what you the symptom that the user sees is that the teleport begins and then you're disconnected. Um, it's 
it's very much like what happens if the network is starting to drop all your UDP packets. Um, but we've we've even done testing with uh, artificially impaired networks, and it's not that bad. So it's not just that, for sure. So, uh, and the QA team that we had on on uh, uh, doing the testing overnight last night uh, normally has is is very good at reproducing anything that's got uh, a network component to it because they're far away. So, um, and they just didn't repro the problem. Well, except for once, but one in 3,000 isn't enough to explain what we're seeing. So we're working on it. It's It's been either number one or number two on my personal list for a couple of days now. And other people are spending all their time on it. So um, hopefully... It, it seems to have begun with a server role, um, but we don't know. Have you tried uh, loaded avatars, lots of scripts and attachments? Yep. Yep. Huh. Um, so, um, I mean, I was just in that channel just before we before we came here, and there, there. Uh, they they have a an avatar called the lag monster and they're using that to to do it. I just had a great idea. <laughs> uh -oh. the, the best way to deal with all the people who are gonna complain and ba when we release Eep is we'll give them a teleport link and tell <laughs> tell them teleport here for support and then they get disconnected. <laughs> Problem solved. <laughs> as near as we can tell, most people are logging right back in. And Damn it. Doing so successfully. So, um, at the same time that the median session length went down, the number of sessions went up by a corresponding amount. So, um, but we, we uh, the best I can do right now is to say we have some clues that we're pursuing. We will try something with next week's role. Um, we haven't decided which of the possible some things yet. Um, we're hoping against hope that test data will give us some guidance there. Um, and we're, we're very much focused on the problem. So keep your fingers crossed. Is there any news on uh, inventory detaching on TPs as well? Uh, yes, yes, we have, I, I mean, I don't, I don't have a solution to offer yet, but we have actually found a bunch of problems that, um, are strong contributors to that. And, uh, we have a theory about a set of changes that will fix it. Um, that's in a separate effort, obviously. Um, I hope to be able to talk in more detail about that when we've got some definitive test results, um, maybe as soon as our next meeting. Um, I've had, I've had a, a couple of people working hard on that for uh, a few weeks now, um, which is, and I, I think it, it looks promising this time. That's been a that's been a tricky one. Oh yeah, ghosted attachments. That's a bugger too, right? As yeah, it's all it's all variations that's on the related. same problem. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so uh, we're we're making some progress on that. We have a particular problem with ghosted attachments with experience or temp attached. Um, Objects, HUDs, and whatnot. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. I, I think. Uh, I think. I think we're making real progress on that issue. Um, we need to 
we need to get some we've we've done a round of testing that does a pretty good job reprogramming the problem and we're trying plugging in changes and see what happens next so i think i think you should fix that before eep just an idea really <laughs> I mean, I don't. I wouldn't want to delay EEP or anything. But. I'm I'm hoping that we can fix that with primarily with server side changes. Um, keep your fingers crossed. I I don't know that that's true. In fact, I doubt that it's completely true. But I think we can probably make it better with server side changes. And if there are any viewer side changes, obviously, we will highlight those here so that you can pluck them out of wherever they are. And, get them into whatever release you've got coming. Oh, read up just a bit, 1236. 12. I may have missed some stuff going by. Yeah, 64-bit viewers, if you're not running one, helps. A lot, actually. The crash rate on 32-bit viewers is more than double what it is on 64-bit. Ah, oh, there's still quite a few people on 32 we have 64-bit users using 32-bit. Well, um, so do we. There are changes in our 32-bit viewers that uh, are to support certain um, Intel HD onboard graphics systems uh, that are not supported by newer versions of Windows, but we can duck it by giving them the 32-bit viewer that lies about what version it expects and that works around the problem so if you have an old motherboard and you're using the intel built-in graphics uh, sometimes you'll be our updater will force you into the 32-bit viewer because that's the only because if we don't um, the graphics won't work at all Uh, Kate, I, I think you missed Kitty's question now, 1236, about adult ratings. Oh, I did miss that entirely. Um, can you just, somebody repaste it here? Yeah, hang on one sec. That was quick. You could do like adult rated and then triple X adult rated. Uh, 
Um, by all means, put in a feature request. Um, I I don't. Uh, I am not the right person to ask about whether we would decide to do something like that. Um, Pilot Kitty, go. Go, go, go. Go, Kitty. Go, Kitty. And then everyone... I think can there's a... It. There's a... I think there's a... I don't know, there was a web user group earlier this week, but there'll be another one. I know. That's but we, I said it. <laughs> we... We triage all the issues a couple times a week, so... Any other hot topics? Uh, that's it for us, I think. Could be, Kata, it just didn't work for you before. There's, if there's test cases you can share with me, um, especially if it's got enough detail that I can look it up in the in the viewer version manager logs. Uh, I'll be glad to dig into that.
Uh, it doesn't look like there will be anything in the viewer logs. The problem is that something about your something in the viewer code is passing an invalid argument to the version checker. I think I think there's an optional log you can turn on to log what's being passed to the version checker. Um, that's what you need to look at. If it was there, it would have been a couple of lines before the log lines you put in that snippet. But it's probably not. It's probably a debug log entry. But if, if you'll send details in a full log, maybe we can we can spot the problem. All right. Um, oh, I have one more quick, quick, quick. Uh, Liru, how's uh, Singularity going? I was kind of hoping you'd have a release soon. Yeah, that'd be interesting. Um, our Firestorm users are going to need somewhere to go after we release EAP. <laughs> 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 good to hear. Releases are good. Yeah. Do lots of them. Well, when is that? Uh, how is that going? Um, I haven't. I haven't heard anything. Uh, was that? Is that the one that's on Magnum? I think it's the one that's on Magnum, isn't it? So the thing is, uh, for you guys, for Singu, um, if you don't have something out when that rolls to the main server, like that, this is your window. Yeah, I don't, I don't think that one will go to, uh, will go to main channel because we're going to want to work on the teleport problem instead. So it'll probably get another week or two in RC. That's not a promise, but it's, it's the more likely event. Oh, it'll be nice to put Phoenix to bed, won't it? <laughs> it's basically a text viewer now, anyway. No, we still have Phoenix users. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't even know how. It's, yeah, it's it's got to be a text client for them. Thanks, all. Uh, have a good weekend, everyone. And uh, just before I click log out, Naran, I wanted to talk to you about something. Um, what was it again? Oh, yeah. Uh, love you. <laughs> Bye, everybody. See you next time, chaps. <laughs>